everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, didn't you? We're talking about presets, how to create them, uh, and I think more importantly, how to export them once you create them. Either export a single preset or a folder full of presets. We're going to cover it all in this tutorial. Um, now, before we get started, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you uh, hit the little like button to just, you know, give a thumbs up to the tutorial. That's always cool. And if you would like to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel every week. I do a Lightroom tutorial. We got Photoshop stuff, and I'm working actively on uh, photography stuff, actual shoot going out and shooting stuff, working with models, working with clients, all kinds of stuff that has to do with photography. It's something that I love so dearly. Uh, and if you wish to support the channel and support what we're doing moving forward, for now, we have a Photoshop course you can purchase. We're working on a Lightroom course that I'll be able to start promoting soon. Uh, but for now, I have a course on Photoshop all about how to retouch images. A link appeared for it. That's why I pointed up to that corner of the video. Uh, you can go over and pick that up. I think you'll love it. Everyone pretty much that's bought it so far has loved it with the exception of like one person. Uh, so go ahead and pick up that course and uh, that would be super duper cool and also free stuff. Down in the description of this video, there is a link which will take you to a page on my website where you can download 10 what I'm calling famous Tutvid emulations. Uh, they're just 10 different presets that I have created in Lightroom based upon famous photos uh, that I enjoy. I'm a big history buff. I love history. So we've got like the 38th parallel, American Civil War, the Molotov Man, the Tenement Square picture, um, all kinds of really, really cool different presets, all based upon specific photos famous photos that I've seen at one time or another uh, that I just thought really kind of worked. So without further ado, to end all of this long, long intro, let's jump into Lightroom and check this thing out. So first of all, this is the action pack. You can download famous Tutvid emulate 38th parallel film cowboy, you know, flag of Iwo Jima, all these different, uh, all these different cool events. And the woman, I can't remember quite what I based this one on, but this is the preset. I just love the colors and tones of it. Um, I wish I could remember the photo uh, that I saw that I based this on, but it's the one that I don't really remember out of all of these. Uh, oh, Film Cowboy also. I don't quite remember what that is, but but really cool. I love these actions. They're a lot of fun to play with, and I figured, you know what? It's about time that I share them with everybody in the world, and I've never done it before. So here's one of the black and whites. Here's uh, one of the actions, just kind of like a cool, pasty, you know, desaturating, sharpening effect. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create one of these presets for ourselves and just the general process I go about to creating a preset. I'm going to right-click on this image, choose Develop Settings, and choose Reset this here is the image as it would have been right out of the camera. In fact, if you check out his sunglasses, you can see I was hovering an octobank almost straight above his head. And that's how we lit this photo. But anyway, that's beside the point. I like to begin over here in lens corrections and just tick on enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. Uh, I usually like to do that with most photos. Also here under detail, I'm going to select the little uh, little target icon here and just target his face so we get an idea for sharpening. I'll probably pump the sharpening to something, something around the middle. 60, 70 is what I like to do. And then I like to increase the mask uh, the masking, hold down alter option while you drag the masking slider and you can see exactly where the sharpening will be applied. So masking of around, I don't know, 40 for this image works pretty well. Just going to focus on the details of his face and will not focus on sharpening a blurry background where the only thing that will be sharpened and accentuated is a bunch of grain and noise. We want to sharpen the details, not the bad details. Uh, so we'll go ahead and collapse detail. So there we go. That's kind of how most of my presets will begin is with a lens correction and a sharpening adjustment. And to create all the tonal and color changes, I generally like to stick with the tone curve, HSL sliders, and camera calibration. The reason I don't really like to get into the basic tab when I'm creating a preset is because uh, if we're if we're working, let's say on this image here, right? We've we've applied the purple pillars of creation preset. And uh, let's say we just think it's too purpley or something. Well, I still have all of my white balance and tint sliders that I can play with. So I can just say, hey, make this more green, take some of the blue out of it. And we really, really want to warm the image up, maybe reduce some of that contrast, right? And then we, we, we base our image on the preset, but we end up having an image that looks quite a bit different because we've come in and adjusted some of the stuff and increased the exposure a little bit. The point is the bulk of these basic sliders, I like to keep them as open as possible. I mean, you can see I adjusted the whites and blacks a little bit, clarity and vibrance a little bit, but everything else remains the same. So that's generally how I think about creating presets. So for this guy, let's begin with tone curve here and let's uh, flatten out the shadows a little bit. So we're going to boost the black point here 
just like that. And then I'm going to pull another point into my tone curve over here and just pull it across like that. We can always use these toggle switches, this little on off switch. It's going to show me there's before I started with the tone curve, there's after. So I've already really flattened this image out a little bit. Maybe I'll pull some brightness back into the very highlight portions. And, and as I'm creating these actions too, I'm thinking not just of this image, but of kind of any image. This image has kind of a darker background. What if I'm working on an image like this that has a very light background? How's that going to look? So that's why I'm looking at the histogram, and you can see here I pulled more brightness into the highlights. But according to the histogram, there's virtually no detail in this image that far over. I don't mind it though, because in an image like this, look at that most of the image detail in the histogram would be affected by a little change like that. So that's that's kind of what's going through my head when I'm creating these presets. So, I mean, obviously you can go and you can t test and tweak them on multiple images as well. Now here, I want to add a little bit of red to the sort of just past middle tones, but not quite in the brightest of highlights. And then I want to pull some cyan down into the shadows, kind of like that. So again, before, after. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go over here to green. And what I want to do is drop a little magenta into the shadows. So I'm going to pull down a little bit to put some magenta in my shadows there. And then I'm going to pull up up here to add some green to my highlights. So it's very subtle. It's a very subtle S curve we're working with. Next, we'll go blue, and maybe we'll go for a little bit of a standard Lomo effect here, that, that sort of Lomography cross processed look where we push a little bit of blue into the shadows. All right, I know this is probably pretty played out courtesy of Instagram and, and just the ease of doing it. And then pull a little bit of yellow into the highlights. Again, subtlety is usually better. So there's before, there's after. We've kind of created this low-mo effect just using the tone curve. But if we want to take it further, we can go to the HSL sliders. Uh, we can choose all here. So I get my hue, saturation, and luminance all together. And I could begin doing stuff like say, hey, you know what? The red tones in any image, shift them a little bit toward orange and also saturate the living daylights out of them. This kind of effect can be really useful, especially if you're emulating a specific type of film or something like that, and you know a particular film oversaturates reds or undersaturates reds or oversaturates greens, or greens tend to read out more purpley, right? You would shift the hue of your reds, uh, I'm sorry, reds tend to read out purpley, so you'd shift the hue of the reds over toward the magenta and purples a bit more. So different things like that that you can really take control of. I can boost the oranges here saturation-wise and boost the brightness of the orange as well. That's going to generally brighten up skin skin tones of most people. For yellows, I could boost them a little bit. Greens, I could probably darken them. Again, that's not going to affect much in this image, but if I have an image with a bunch of greenery and grass and forest, that's going to change it. Um, sometimes maybe you want to shift the green toward more of an aqua and the yellows more toward green. Uh, that tends to give your grass a more vibrant, almost tropical feel. That can be really interesting. Uh, so just a lot of different things you can do. I think I actually want to pull some of the brightness out of the orange in this case, darken the skin tones a little bit more, make sure they're flattened out enough so they can really take that color that the uh, that the tone curve is going to be applying to them. So if I shut off HSL, turn it on, you can see it's subtle, but it's there. Last but not least, camera calibration. You can change straight up a different camera uh, profile. Something like ca uh, camera neutral tends to give a little bit more dynamic range. Uh, I like to work with that. That can be a nice one. We'll probably roll with that. And then you can add a specific color to your shadows. Add some purple. Add some green. In this case, I'll probably just add a few drops of green. And uh, then you can shift the, the way the reds, greens, and blues are interpreted on your image and slide like all the reds toward more of a yellowy orange. You can see what's happening to the red tones in my image. It's really starting to mess up his skin a lot. You can also take the saturation of that and boost the saturation of those pixels or just desaturate them. And you can see we really almost made his skin very yellow, but then we desaturated it a lot and it kind of blends it a little more. I still don't like it, but just know the options there. We could also switch it or shift it to be like very pink and magenta. Uh, also for green, same thing goes for green. Increase uh, toward the aquas with green. You're going to get like a magenta shift. Move away from that. You're going to get more of like a greenish yellowish shift. And the same thing here. If you increase the uh, saturation, you can see what we've done to his skin. It's made it really yellow. Uh, desaturate it. It's actually kind of a cool effect if we take it down to negative 100 in this case. Uh, but a lot of really interesting, thing, uh, interesting things you can do. You can correct little color casts or add a color cast if you know, again, skin typically has a little bit of magenta in it for this particular look you're emulating. Boom! Shift the green primary over a little bit and add that. And the same thing here with blues. So you can go like very red purple or red pink, excuse me, with blue all the way up to very like teal, a teal yellow color. 
Uh, so again, just depending on what you're looking for, you can go through and tweak and adjust and reduce or increase the saturation of any one of these colors within camera calibration. And again, I have my little before after switch. We can shut it off, turn it on. It did a little bit. Uh, what we can do here, I wanna actually go back into the tone curve because I wanna pump a little bit more contrast into this. So I'm gonna pull down on the black slider here or the black point. I'm really gonna pull some deep contrast into that and then I'm gonna push it back relatively quickly. Something like that, maybe pull down on the white point a little bit to flatten out some of the highlights just a touch. Adjust that a little bit, there we go. So there's before, there's after, I dig it. All right, so let's say we absolutely love this. Well, we can save it as a preset by just hitting this little plus icon over here on the top right corner of our presets dialog. So the little plus icon, we can name it whatever we like. I'm just gonna name this Tutvid uh, for testing. And I'm gonna save it to the user presets folder down here. I've got two presets in there already. We can save it to that. And we can choose what settings to save. So let's say for this image, we were playing around with it and we did a bunch of exposure and contrast adjustments, but we know we don't want that stuff included. We can just uncheck that whole box and say, nope, we don't want that. We don't want white balance. We don't want, you know, typically like your graduated filters, radio filters, um, different uh, transforms. You don't want to include that stuff, uh, you know, because it's usually particular to the image. So once you've kind of figured out what you like, what you don't like, uh, just go ahead and hit create. And you can see there it is, Tutfid for testing, a new uh, Lightroom preset. Now, if we want to get rid of the preset, you can always right click on it and choose delete. Boom. If you want to export a single preset, check this out. Export preset right there. Bam. We can export this single preset. We can save it wherever we like. Tutfid for testing LR template. And you can share this with anybody. They can import it by just coming over here and right clicking on any folder and choosing import and then navigate to your hard drive where that file is. Grab the file, import it. Boom. You're done. Now, what if we want to export, in this case, I want to save this entire folder of presets so you guys can download them and use them. Or maybe you have presets you want to uh, save as a download or sell or whatever you want to do. Well, if I right click on a folder, notice I don't have an export option, just import. How do I get to this? Well, it's up here under Lightroom Preferences. This would be under Edit uh, Preferences for those of us on the PC. But here on the Mac, Lightroom Preferences, and we have an entire little option segmented area up here, Presets. And what I'm interested in is here, Location. I don't really care about store presets with this catalog, not right now. I'm interested in this, Show Lightroom Presets Folder. And it's gonna use my OS and open up the folder where my Lightroom presets are saved. Now, you can see it's just giving me the Lightroom folder. So I'm gonna double click on Lightroom and where your presets are is they're in a folder called Develop Presets. There are a bunch of other presets like Export Presets, Import Presets, and Filter Presets, so on and so forth. Develop Presets, simply put, they're the presets that appear when you are in let me bring this down. When you're in the develop module. So we're over here in the develop module. These are the presets. So the develop presets appear in your uh, presets module here, uh, or in the develop module, I'm sorry. And you can see there's the folder, famous Tutvid emulate. So I would simply right click on this and copy it. And I could jump out to my desktop, go to like my desktop here, and I could paste it on my desktop, which I've already done. I could paste it. I could, you know, compress it, turn it into a zip file, whatever I want. I can do it. And it's that easy. It's not as simple as just right clicking on the folder and saying, hey, export this folder. But you just navigate to where it is on your hard drive. You find that folder. Boom. You save it out or you copy it to where you want it to be. Upload it to Dropbox. Upload it to your website or email it to a friend or whatever you want to do. It's really that easy to both export, import, and thirdly, export entire folders of Lightroom presets. So that's really going to be it for this one. I hope you've really enjoyed it, learned a thing or two. I know we didn't get to actually exporting the preset until kind of the very end of the tutorial, but it's pretty quick and easy to do. I wanted to show you my entire process of creating uh, a preset in Lightroom and, of course, sharing with you those downloads. I hope you've downloaded them and loved them and continue to love them. Um, they're really a lot of fun to play with at the very least and see what you can get with them. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and hit the little like button, subscribe to my channel so you never miss another Lightroom tutorial in the future. And if you do uh, create something using these presets, by the way, do whatever you want with them. I really don't care. Um, if you do create something with these Lightroom presets, upload it to Instagram. I would love to see it. Tag me in Instagram. My Instagram username is at Tutvid. I'll have like a little graphic pop up here. I should add to do anything with the presets that I said a moment ago. Don't sell them. That would be the only thing. Just I, I wanted to be out there for free for the good people to see and use and know about. Uh, tag me in Instagram or, or on your Instagram photo. I don't need a shout out. You don't need to do anything fancy. If you want to give me a shout out, I guess fine, but I just want to see your stuff and be able to interact with you a little bit. I try to go in and, you know, drop a like.
like on people's stuff and, you know, drop a comment there and just let you know if I like it or, you know, anything about it. Uh, usually it's all like, hey, good job, man. Cool. Love it. Uh, that type of thing. So for creating presets in Lightroom and exporting a single preset or a folder full of presets or a thousand presets at once, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.